All right, guys, we are live. It's episode 258 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. Co-host Greg Cannon after Jen just bails at the... <laughs> Hi, Jen. <laughs> Hi, everybody else. There, Greg's in the house. Yeah, guest and star of the hour. Uh, Rusty Russell, he's also the co-director of the Australian PRS. Also, he's the host of the Precision Shooting Podcast. What's going on, Rusty? Hey, mate. How are we? It's going good. Looking forward to talking to you a lot about the podcast and what you got going overseas there. Jennifer Seymour. What's going on, Jen? You with us? No. Jennifer. <laughs> She's uh, not there. This has been quite the show to get. You, you hear me, Jen? No? No, she can't. This has been quite the show with some technical difficulties last minute. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Uh, well, I, I expected with Australian internet that I was going to have all the problems because our internet is notoriously slow, and uh, so far I'm doing all right. Yeah, so far <laughs> you're doing the best out of this here. I think it's crossed. It, se it seems like me and Jen are having the worst of uh, some connection issues today. Um, but let's get on to – let's see if Jen's back real quick. Jen, you hear us? You hear oh, us? Oh, now I can all hear right. you. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> hey, Jen. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so we were talking about a little bit of technical difficulties. We're going to get it rolling. Hopefully, throughout the live show here, it just kind of hangs in there, and we can get this one through. Uh, show sponsors here, the folks over at Tactical Shit, all right? Shop.tacticalshit.com for all your tactical shit needs. We have a discount code coming later on the show uh, for them, all right? Also, the folks over at GSL Technologies uh, for the world's finest suppressors, gsltechnologies.com. If you're in the market for looking, if you want to add something to your gun, whatever the case um, take a look at them. They just released their new MP5 can. It's called the Phoenix. So take a look if you're one of those folks who have an MP5. One of the many lucky folks. Not very many, actually. Not many lucky folks out there that own one of those. But if you do, they have a, a nice suppressor for you. Uh, Q&A stuff. If you want to get your questions live here, if you're watching on the YouTube side of things, join the, join the conversation top right-hand side of of the screen you can plug your comments and live questions there we'll grab them throughout the show also you prefer to use facebook page the shooter's mindset on facebook you can kind of plug your comment in on the latest post regarding uh this show and uh greg give some greg some action he'll uh, mm -hmm. screen those and uh, get them to rusty live here uh lastly the shooters mindset.com where you can keep up with all the shooters mindset live shows also shop there uh check out our blog and some trainings uh, we have some scheduled over there at theshoesmindset.com. All right, let's kick this one off. Rusty, for those who are unfamiliar with you, tell us a little bit more about yourself. What kind of got you involved in the shooting sports? I, as probably is the case for many shooters and certainly many many that I talked to, I grew up shooting. Uh, Dad put me into it and uh, we hunted and did all those sort of things, but never took it overly serious until about 2004 when I went over to the UK and we shot shotguns. And for some reason, that's uh, what clinched it for me, shooting shotguns and shooting rabbits uh, on a farm in country England. Came back and since then have been involved in the in the industry and got a job in it and uh yeah I, I thoroughly enjoyed it settled a bit more on rifles probably for the last 10 years or so i uh, been more interested in rifles but still occasionally get the old shotgun out and have a crack with it there you go and how's the uh, how's kind of the i mean i don't obviously i don't think any of us here know much about shooting overseas especially in australia i mean gun friendly state i mean the laws are a little wonky i mean good hunting what are we what are we what are we looking at over there? Uh, yeah, it's it's certainly it's not the most friendly place to shoot. Uh, however, we we do still shoot. You know, obviously we can run a PRS over here. We've got uh, competitions that happen. There is I don't have numbers on it, but there'd be hundreds of gun clubs around the country. And there's about there's about 1.2 million people who shoot here or hold a license, uh, which is something we need to have to be able to own guns. And that's uh, 1.2 million out of about 25 million population. So it's uh, it's a reasonable number. It's not it's not a tiny number. There's quite a few of us, which is good. The, the yeah the, yeah we we have to have a license to do that. But once you got your license, and depending what categories you can, if you're looking at like bolt action stuff, or you're looking at shotguns and and uh, well break open shotguns, double barrel stuff, uh, it's relatively 
easy process to go through just takes time and then you can own you know the guns that you need for whatever comp or hunting or anything like that some of the states not the one i'm from but some of the states are really good with hunting so being able to go on what we call crown land so public land uh, where you can go hunt again you generally need a license to do so but uh, outside of that um it's not the most accepted place so you know certainly notice the difference when i go to the us and they talk about you know we, we we're talking openly guns in in a cafe or something like that and there's no no one bats an eyelid a little bit different over here if you start doing that uh in front of lots and lots of people <laughs> there yeah yeah i can imagine that conversation i mean even though so, i mean you'd be surprised sometimes people hear that conversation over here and they might be like oh man we got some real you know the way shit's going over here yeah. there's a lot of yeah know, depends. I, but I yeah you can regional for you can be in a you could be in a starbucks and mcdonald's and crack that conversation and pr there probably won't be too many people bat an eye over yeah. here for sure yeah more, more so definitely yeah definitely. well jennifer and greg just shot a match over the weekend this past weekend uh, yeah. a masterpiece arms match right you guys did pretty well over there yeah we had a good time it was a great match it was fun it was like 22 stages lots of good shooters there we had a great time it was good i had a good match and it was fun it was greg's first match Second oh, match. First, first match without a coach. Well, yeah. gap grind doesn't match. count because you got coached on the clock for the gap grind. So this exactly. was your first big boy match. Yes, it was. It was a very humbling experience, to, to <laughs> say the least. Um, I got a, I got a big go do list. Um, you know, people always talk that that people always say stuff about like practice. Um, <laughs> I'm the worst at that. No, um, you're not the worst. Not not the <laughs> worst. So like. I spent in, like a long time building this really awesome foldable barricade, and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna practice on this. And da 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 da. No, never, never, never <laughs> actually happened. Yeah. Um, so we got about a month until uh, K and M. So I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot of practice. Um, it was nice. So like, I at the end of Saturday, I got a, a good little bit of coaching and ran a little bit of dry fire. Um, somehow even being, uh, I was about dead by the end of that day. Summer started on Saturday morning, by the way. Um, yeah. yeah, we literally had people falling out due to the heat. Yeah, we did have wow. some, I pass out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One would think the opposite if they saw your little room there. It's like, hey, he's got a reload. He's got a save. This dude has to be top notch no, in the I, PRS game. Not, not in the PRS game. I, I can shoot a pistol. I can shoot an AR when the bullets come out straight. When they do this, that's a, another story. Um, mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I could shoot the gun, I could hit the <laughs> there targets, you go. but it's the, the biggest thing that got me was a lot of the props. Um, yeah. you know, the, if, if I could support both ends of the rifle, I was golden as long as it was inside of about a, a thousand yards, anything past that. Um, like we were talking about before, I have a very short barrel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not pushing a lot of velocity so i was i was struggling a little bit there there we go well you learned a lot of things that's always the key whether you you win a match or you lose a match or you dq from a match you always want to take away a big kind of learning experience to approve upon so if you know you know what you need to approve upon then that's kind of a win you come back to the next match knowing a lot more than what you did Jen, you, you did a pretty good match. I was, I know I was hyping you up in like the middle of the match or something like that. I was like, how are you doing? She's like, oh, well, she's, I forgot what started it. I think you were like third in the standings or you were amongst the ladies. Amongst least. the ladies. Amongst yes. the ladies. I was like, well, she has a legitimate shot of being high lady at this match. And you were second lady. No, I was actually third lady. Mo, okay. for some reason, wasn't listed as. But I was only six points off of high lady, which I was like, man, six points. Like, I can count in my head six points that I should have gotten. It was like a, you know, broke the shot too soon or, you know, that I was capable of making and just kind of botched. But, yeah, it was one, one stage of um, could have got you there. I don't know, one stage. Um, anyway, it was, it was good. I shot 75% of the winner. I was happy with that that um is the highest i've done and so i was happy with that the wind was a little tricky you know when the mirage is going this way and the windsock is blowing that way and yeah mm -hmm. yeah they they were telling me different stories but um it, it was still it was a ton of fun i enjoyed it 
I felt more solid and um, I felt like I'm starting to get a little competitive now. So that was good. There we go. I, I'm digging it. I mean, you can see, you can see in your videos, if you go back and watch some of the videos, you know, and you know, if you go back from anybody's video, if you go back my videos, your own videos, you'll kind of see the confidence level and the progression and every, you know, it's just like, it's not, you're not really, it doesn't look like you're thinking out there. It's just, you're in that zone and it's just, you know, it's just kind of a monkey on a gun. Boom. Impact, impact, impact. And then you move on. Did you just you call know? me a monkey? Monkey yeah, on a gun. Monkey <laughs> on a gun. That's what monkey on a gun. That's what uh, Patrick Kelly says it. You know, you're just a monkey. Okay. On. Yeah, you're, some, you're just a monkey on a gun. You're in the zone. You just pull the trigger, bolt. You know, you're just not. It's like you're in that. That I, I will say, finding a with. finding a stable position was more natural and just kind of happened instead of me fighting the whole time. It felt like it felt more natural. I just got into positions and felt more stable. Um, I still need to speed up a little bit, but I cleaned three stages. I had three stages that I feel like I bombed, and then I had like. 15 or 16 stages that were pretty good. So if I hadn't bombed three stages, I would have done a lot yeah. better. So there we go. Yep. But I see a high lady title coming in the near future. And we'll I see. Y'all got to stop talking happening. about it. That's like somebody came up to me right before one stage and was like, <laughs> man, all you need is for Mo to have one bad stage and, then, and you'll be in it. You're right there, Jen. You're shooting so good. You're right there. I'm like, stop telling me that. <laughs> um, and I bombed the very next stage. I was like, oh, no. God, don't yeah. get in my head. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's kind of different with that. But yeah, I hear you. Uh Rusty, you are the, as we kind of introduced you, you are the co-director of the Australian PRS. I am, uh, yeah. Recently, you guys came out to the U.S. to shoot a match. How did the two compare? Any differences? And, or are they pretty much the same? Well, uh, quite different. I mean, the, the matches that we shot, we shot three matches while we were over there, and they they were all club-level matches. Well, two of them were club-level matches, and, and one was a, we got the wrong weekend, but we shot the shot the stages anyway uh, so uh, thanks to foul ball precision who let us shoot the match two weeks late um anyway so the the matches were different i have been to the finale uh, there in 2017 and so you know, i guess that's my comparison pretty much all our matches at this stage in australia have to be on square ranges so have to be on a standard range which which doesn't allow us to get that field match type feel which we actually used to do uh we we used to do privately but but we can't do that publicly uh in terms of an open match that anyone can come along to uh the format's all very similar the stages uh we don't have the distance at this stage that you guys often have on your ranges so most of our ranges are capped out to about five six or seven hundred meters which certainly limits us a little bit in what we do it does affect our stage design generally our stages can be a little bit uh, faster paced, perhaps a bit more time pressure because we haven't quite got the distance to play with and we don't put quite so many just slow and, and long distance sort of stuff uh, in there. Um, there we go. How many shooters do y'all usually have at y'all? Like here we have anywhere from like, I'd say 140 to 300 at the big matches. How many are y'all usually having? We get about the 60 mark, 50 to 60 uh, for most of our matches at this stage. Uh, but it is only, it, this is only its second season now. So we, we've had one match, which we had 59 shooters uh, attend. And our next match is coming up in a few weeks, uh, about four weeks. And we've got a few spots left open for that, but it's still going to be sort of north of that 50 number. Sweet. How many matches a year do y'all run? We will run this year six matches uh, and then a finale as well. That's awesome. Yeah, which is obviously a lot smaller compared to uh, to you guys, but uh, you know we. But it's you know, growing. The population that we've got. Yeah, we we our first year we had one match. Uh, second year we had four in a finale. This year we have six in a finale. Uh, and next year, who knows? Who knows? So six in a finale, and it's hmm. about sixty per. Is it like the same sixty that are going to each one, or no, is it? A Do good you mix. Your regulars, there's probably sort of 10 to 15 uh, who travel the majority of the circuit, and, and then you do get you you'd get a fair mix from there. But you know that that, that community is, has gotten tighter over the last couple of years, which is really good to see. Got, people got to know each other. I certainly saw that we saw we were there a couple of years ago in the US, where you know the finale, lots of people knew each other, and uh, I remember our first match, not a lot of people knew each other, and that certainly has changed, and it's it's a really welcoming committee. Uh, community which is excellent to see 
Yeah. I was looking at, um, Jen, I'm not sure if you read the email we got today from, from the PRS about how many members we've had so far this year. I think they said 800 members signed up so far and it's only been open for a month. No, I guess it's been more than a month now. Hmm. But, in a couple months. Yeah, but that's just pro series. Um, and then it was like something like thirteen hundred club level shooters that have that have actually signed up. Not even counting people that haven't. It's wow. crazy. Yeah, I, I thought I read that right before the show, and I was just absolutely blown away that we have that many shooters. Because you, know, you go to the matches and you kind of know it's like ninety percent of the people you know you've been to a match with before, but then they're still. 600 other members that you've never even met well most of the same you know we have like the different regions and not that everybody intentionally stays in their region but it's just logistically easier mm -hmm. to get to those so like i don't shoot outside of the southeast very much because it's expensive and it's a pain in the butt to fly i mean i <laughs> flew out to arizona and did gina's match but other than that i just stayed in the southeast and i think a lot of people kind of stay local but we have so many I bet if you went to another, um, if you went to another region, it'd probably be like all people I didn't know. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we, we've we've uh, you know thinking about Australia, it's it's actually similar in size uh, to the US. Um, so we we get a lot of guys who have to travel a long way to get to matches. Uh, but I just just did some numbers quickly on based on our memberships for this year. If we if we went based on per population, we we're in front of you guys. As a percentage of the <laughs> well, there you go. That works. Only just, though. Only just. <laughs> so, those, so those PRS numbers, Greg, that you rattled off, is that a big increase from like last year as far uh, as the numbers go? Or we don't know that. So I'm, I'm not sure what it was last year. Give me one I have second. No idea. Let, me, let, me, let me see what he said in here. Come on, email. Yeah. Um, over 800 Pro Series members and 1,300 Regional Series members. Um, where does it say? <laughs> Sorry, reading mumbling. He said something along the lines of it's the, the, the biggest we've had yet. There we go. Yeah, that's good. That's good to hear. It's exciting. Yeah, some side news. Uh, I know we're going to get back to the PRS here, uh, but I don't know how we kind of. Someone sent this to me, and I don't. The you know the source is a, a friend of ours, but posted on the shooter's mindset, uh, Instagram and Facebook. There's a look lo looks like a leak a leak of a new Glock model 47. Um, so last couple of years, usually either before Shot Show or before NRA Show, there's some type of leak on Glock, and people go batshit over it and ask why they're doing that and why would they do a single stack and then everybody goes out and buys it when they release it. Um, it seems, so if you head over to our IG page or uh, the Shooter's Mindset on Facebook, we posted a picture of supposedly a Glock 47 model. Um, this looks like, just based off that picture, that it's like a Glock 17 MOS, but it people are kind of... Uh, just kind of giving their comments on maybe it's a single stack Glock that's the size of a 17. Um, also, the that slide slide looks a little bit longer, maybe 34-ish slide. The dust cover looks a little different, but for the most part, it looks like a 17 MOS with front cocking serrations, which is not new. Um, so head over there, take a look. I don't know how reliable this picture is or... The, or the source that it came from, but usually this is the case with Glock. Someone leaks something and someone can't keep their mouth shut. Um, and NRA is only two weeks away, essentially. So this is usually when these leaks happen. Um, so maybe that we can expect maybe more as the days close and NRA approaches. So take a look at that new Glock or maybe a Glock 47 model. Uh, as far as the podcast goes, um, I wanted to just direct people who are tuning in right now. Where can they check your podcast out? Obviously, uh, one of the spots that I just Googled up and you told me another website and we'll hit that here. Impact dynamics dot online is a place where you can find a lot of information regarding the precision rifle series in, a, in Australia, but you can also click the media tab and right 
right on the media yeah. tab. It's the Precision Shooting Podcast. And as soon as you click that, you, it starts playing. And you can there's a list of <laughs> all the shows, and and there it is. I mean, it's it's not hard. So a couple, you know, two three clicks, and you start listening to it. Um, there's a couple other websites. I believe it's Impact Dynamic Shooting. Dot no, com just, dot just, au. Oh, you've hit the right one is impact dynamics dot online or dot com dot au. Either one will get you there. Of course, on all the normal podcast players, whatever your favorite one is, uh, precision shooting podcast should return us uh, somewhere up there. Uh, and then, of course, you, you can go to precision rifle series dot com dot au if you want to check out the PRS exclusively as well. Boom. There we go. Greg, what do you got? Um, 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 um. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that All was right. good. Sorry, I was, I was checking live. We're real, we're real organized on this show, apparently, guys. Super, especially today. Super yeah. organized. Um, do you ever foresee having an international match on like Australian PRS versus US PRS, or maybe like a team match with one Australian and one American shooter on each team? I know that this year there will be some Australian shooters at the finale uh, as we edge towards uh, some sort of international uh, competition that I, I, I know is on the longer term cards. But there will be a few shooters from Australia entering the finale, uh, some of hopefully some of our best shooters. And so that will be exciting to see how they fare. And, and you know, the guys over here are continually wanting to see how they would go against uh, against. You know, the guys who were over there and have been doing it for a lot longer uh, and do it perhaps a lot more often. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Hey, We'll see in November, in the middle of November, how some of the Australian guys go over there. You know, I'm, I'm hoping they win, but, you know, it's, uh, you guys got some pretty good shooters over there who are pretty experienced at doing this. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, if not, if not, we'll just bring some snakes with us and just let them loose and that'll... Mm. <laughs> yeah, it'd be cool nervous. though to have a match where you had like one Australian and one American on a team and have. I think it'd be cool. To yeah, I think I think that that will, uh, you know, you know whether you do it uh, probably probably can be easily done over here, but yeah, kind of mixing up like a team match or something like that. Bring yeah, someone from cool. over there, team them up, and then I think that'll entice some folks to come down here. Obviously, we get. Some long, we might have some longer ranges to shoot at, so that's interesting in itself. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm kind of cool with that. I think those kind of make some of the funnest matches when you kind of have some type of team match or some type of uh, mm -hmm. you know something different to mix it up. I mean, those are usually exciting matches to kind of go through and kind of learn from. Yeah, mm -hmm. something Indeed. different is all is always fun. That's like uh, we had a two man two gun a couple weeks ago and. I mean, it was it was small, not a lot of people, but it was just a freaking fun match. Yeah, that looked fun. That looked fun. I never seen two shooters shooting at the same time on the same stage, though. That was interesting. Oh, you haven't? Yeah, that's no. uh, we yeah. we used to do that in our private matches, and certainly is is really good fun combination of them shooting at the same time or tag teaming. Was, yeah, uh, I mean, I've seen yeah, the tag team thing you. where like one will start and maybe tag team someone, and then that person will go type of deal, but. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's just my memory's not serving me pretty well. I don't remember seeing too many. When we had the um, War Sport Three Gun, which is a team match, uh, we would shoot at the same time. I mean, it was very strategically done to where you're never, you know, you're on the same plane shooting. Mm -hmm. You know, one's shooting this side, one's shooting that side. Or like we had one that was all this steel. So, like me and my partner started on the outside and just met in the middle. Or it was kind of like meeting more on my side because he got farther than I did. But <laughs> You know, you could just get, and it was clear in plates. So, yeah, I've been in lots of matches where you're shooting at the same time. It, it was cool. It, it was well done to make sure that it was safe and everybody was shooting in a safe direction and there was no chance of crossing uh, muzzles yeah, cool. or anything like that. But, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, and they, they went a little bit, like, IDPA-ish on it almost, um, where it's like, you know, it's not shoot targets where they become available. It's like from here, you'll shoot these targets from here. You'll shoot these targets. Um, and on a couple of stages, we were moving forward with the guns at the same time. And it's like, your gun will be pointed in this direction. Yours will be pointed in this direction. And you're going to wait for both the RO to see both of you pointed like that before he says move and you move together at the same time. So, that, so that there's no, never anybody with a loaded gun behind anybody else. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, Rusty, where do you see the sport going in the future? There's been a ton of growth, and especially on the female side of shooters on the PRS thing. How big do you yeah. think PRS will get? 
don't know. I, I'd like to see the international growth of it. I'd like to see more countries involved. In, and then back to what you were talking about, being able to have like a, an international competition. I think that would be really exciting to see. Uh, Obviously, I'm, you know, I've, I've spectated on the side of the, the US side of things and just seen it grow, which is exciting. Uh, but I don't know where, you know, particularly where that will go within your country. In Australia, we will grow to the point that, uh, you know, matches are still being filled, um, but really good fun. And, and we don't want to make it uh, – we want to see a, a club scene grow here. That's that's our next big thing. When we started uh, our first match, there was one club that existed in Australia that would shoot this style. Uh, shout out to the, the guys up in Darwin um, who Jen would have met Butters. His club uh, is the oldest club in, in the country. Uh, He's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> He's, yeah. Yeah, he was really good, really good with his hairstyles. But uh, he um, – he – uh, so that that club was the only one going, and now there's about eight clubs that are running around the the country uh, in that sort of two year period, uh, with probably another three or four probably kicking off by the end of the year, and so we hope that 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 growth in club levels will really continue to to push on as well. I must say, by the way, uh, when I joined this chat, you guys were all drinking beers, and it was ten o'clock in the morning for me, and and that was not really I, I couldn't really join in, but I do remember the old saying that. Um, that uh, if you drink rum, you're just a pirate. You're not not, not an alcoholic. So this morning, you get to be a pirate. <laughs> there is some solid life advice there, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Well, for the Rusty, rundown. how many how many female shooters do y'all have in Australia and doing PRS? Like I know Jody, but do y'all have yep. a lot, or is she we, rare? We don't have a lot, but we are getting more. So I think there would have been probably a total of. Five, six, about seven or eight uh, females who have shot the various PRS matches. Uh, challenges, we, we've got to get a few of them to uh, to each match, but there are more and more who are, there was a, a, a lady who was at the last match who was really interested in, and, and wanted to see it. She had a couple of them, who probably two or three of them that were there watching with the intent to actually get involved in future. So we will hopefully see that number double very quickly and, and continue to grow. Uh, as well, because that's certainly, uh, you know, it's it's a well-rounded sport. My, my wife uh, shoots as well, uh, but just not as regularly as she would like to, and particularly only rimfire at this stage, but she'll get there. She'll get there. That's yeah, awesome. She'll probably end up shooting a PRS match before I do. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Awesome. She might beat you. Yeah, probably will. I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> well, mm. um, so in Australia, I know the gun laws are – stricter but how like are there restrictions on calibers are there restrictions on mag um capacities and is it difficult i know you said you got to have a license but is it difficult like if you wanted to get in prs is it very difficult to be able to get the gun and and get the license and have it so that you can shoot it and then do they restrict the calibers so, I mean, we could talk about gun restrictions and laws all day uh, because there's lots of them in this country. But uh, keeping it on the PRS topic, that's, I think, one of the reasons PRS has become so popular in this country. Uh, not not just because it's a really entertaining sport and it's really good fun to do, but because it's really accessible to us. So pretty much of everything you see in PRS in the US, the only thing that we can't really get our hands on to use is suppressors. Outside of that, the bolt action guns, the, the calibers that are used, all that sort of gear are really relatively accessible. So you obviously you have to go through your licensing process, which takes you know, a period of time, and you obviously your background checks with that and, and whatever you know, whatever history you have is, is taken into account. But once you've gone through that process, you could buy anything that would be used in the PRS. You could buy in, in most states anything up to sort of 300 Win Mag, 338, some stuff. Um, start There starts to be a few more restrictions around like 338 Lapures and 50 BMGs and that sort of gear in some of the states. But again, keeping it on PRS, that's not really the stuff that we're using. So that, I think that's why this sport has become so popular. And the, the chassis and, and stocks, again, in most states, no problems. The folding stocks in some states are no problems. Uh, there is a little bit of, uh, we, we're meant to have a national gun laws, and we certainly don't have that. But uh, within within what we do, um, 
it's very it works well with the laws that we have here. And I know they shoot lots of other disciplines in IPSC and uh, the cowboy uh, shooting and and many other disciplines. I just don't I don't know huge amounts about those. So uh, I, I'll speak with uh, with what I know. Is ammo readily available? Well, it depends on how much you guys buy and leave for us. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I we, buy it we all. often we often have shortages <laughs> and. And so we've actually just uh, just had a whole stack of like the Hornady ELDs have been real hard to get a hold of recently, and they've just come back into stock mostly across the board. I, I run a, a website and a shop that, that sells mostly projectiles, so it's the reason I, I know about that. Um, but you know, burgers, for example, we've barely seen over the last couple of years, and and I don't know if that's been true where you are, but uh, so we, we run into shortages. But in terms of like going down to the shop and buying ammo, in terms of gun shops, yeah, it's it's all pretty easy to get. Yeah, the, the, the burger thing, and actually I was, I was talking with Jen about this last night or the night before. Obviously, I'm fairly new to the precision rifle, and I was, you know, we have the what the pros use, and they show you, you know, what, what bullets everybody uses that's winning all these matches and everything, and everyone's using that burger um, 140 hybrid that's shooting a 6.5. I was like, obviously, that's what I'm going to shoot. Let me go online and buy it. <laughs> yeah. That's not what I'm going to shoot. No. You can find them anywhere. Oh. Went down to Cabela's, ELD match, 140 grains. Yep. That's what I'm going to shoot. And that's <laughs> not what you're going to shoot in Australia if you're here because they're, they're real hard to get at the moment. <laughs> it's not just you. No. So, okay, good. <laughs> so, y'all are allowed to reload there. You can get, pat, you can have powder, all that. I always wondered if that was an issue. Yeah, reloading is no problems. Again, there's a few laws that are effective uh, in in terms of you know understanding which laws will affect that. But you can do it, no problems. Uh, some of the best powder in the world might be biased, but some of the best powder in the world is made here by ADI, often rebranded over there for the US market. Um, but yeah, a lot of that stuff comes here from from Australia, so we can generally get powder fairly good. Oh, there we go. All right, we're going to move into the discount corner portion of the show. We try to save you money. I think we totally missed this portion of the show last week. We we just didn't even hit it. <laughs> uh, it, it depends on how where the conversation kind of kind of goes, and and the guests. Sometimes you know there there really isn't any time to get into the discount corner. So here we're going to hit this one. Uh, you know, try to save you money from some great companies who support the Shooters Mindset Show. Jen, you usually start us off. What do you have? Yep, you can get ten uh, percent off at CarbonArms.us on the Carbon Arms uh, ratchet belts, um, shotgun shell caddies, extension tubes, all that good stuff using TSM ten. You can also get ten percent off at Under Industries on jerseys. Um, just message the Under Industries Facebook page and mention the Shooters Mindset for ten percent off. Um, they have jackets and jerseys and all kinds of stuff. Sweatshirts. I love my sweatshirt. I wear it more than anything. Um, and then you can get 10% off at the Shooter's Mindset store using the code um, GENTSM10. And we have uh, some TTI stuff and all kinds of stuff. But that's what I got. All right. Greg, what do you got? Well, first, back to Jen with her ratchet belts. Um, I bought one of those like two years ago. And mm -hmm. finally got around to putting it on my belt because um, I for the Noveski match, I was like, man, I need to take all this crap off this belt and put this crap on this belt. And I was like, wait a second. I bought a new belt and a ratchet and have just never pulled it out of the uh, pulled it out of the package. Put that on there. That shit is awesome. So if you don't have a ratchet belt, you should buy one. Um, anyway, discount corner. Um, you can save 10% off at Overwatch Defense with the code CANON10. Um, you can shoot them an email, give them a call. Um, they do some really sweet Cerakote work, um, and they also sell about anything and everything else you could think of gun-related. Gun Boom, there we go. Man, I've seen some dude came in the shop. I just got my gun Cerakoted, and I'm like, dude, it was awful. Sometimes I don't know where some people find. You know, you got to, you know, take a look at, do a little research sometimes. It, it kind of can go a little bit. Mm -hmm. It can go a long way. This dude looked like, I don't know, it looked like a garage. Like, even though there's some people who can do good work out of the garage, but it just looked like someone that didn't have much experience. And the color was just real wonky. Or, you know, different strokes for different folks, but uh, that one was a little bit weird. Yeah, I've uh, definitely seen some of those <laughs> like a... a, a, a <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, discount to my end. Uh, Shop.tacticalshit.com. Save you 10% off website-wide. Also, if you're in St. Peter's, Missouri area, you can stop by their retail shop. 
Uh, yell TSM10 at the cashier, and you will save 10% off on your order. Uh, Terran Tactical Innovations.com, TSM10 is good uh, for all their parts in their store. Uh, don't believe it works for gunsmithing stuff, but if you want some type of discount, I can probably get you one. You just got to email me. You can do that at the shooters mindset at gmail.com. Uh, um, tactical.com, TSM 10 is good 10% off everything off, uh, um, tactical's website. A lot of AR stuff, a lot of holsters over there, um, tactical.com, TSM 10. And, uh, that'll do it on my end. Uh, Rusty, anything on the fly for companies who support you discounts? I got no discounts. I'm sorry, man. Uh, just hook up everyone uh, who we support because they uh, they support shooters. That's uh, that's all I'll say. We met big big thanks to uh, Vortex, who have been a massive supporter of the PRS in in Australia, uh, for kicking it off and and was there from the start. Yeah, we would have a discount code for Burger Bullets, but we can't find any. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no there's no sense in uh, saying that code out loud here. Uh, but what else we have here? I got a. Any upcoming matches, goals, or pro uh, projects you have coming up, and how do you choose which matches to shoot? Uh, do you attend all the PRS matches as a director? Right. Uh, there's a few in there. Uh, so in terms of do I attend all the PRS matches, uh, not, I don't have to, um, but uh, so far I have been able to. been fortunate enough to be able to attend all of them. I hope to get to all of them this year. Um, I do really enjoy them. and uh, But I've not shot one yet, and I... My my co-director is planning, actually, he's going to shoot his first match uh, in the next match in about four weeks. So he's going to have a crack at that one. And I will I will give it a go next year, I think, uh, 2020. So that's my goal. Uh, I do shoot our cl uh, club matches. I uh, used to only shoot the ones I wasn't match director for, but now we've, we've been able to uh, been able to get uh, – we, we use the – the method of using squad mums, which is something we learn in the US, uh, which works an uh, absolute treat. So now match directors and ROs and everyone gets to shoot the club matches, uh, which is which is really good. So my focus this year really, because uh, we're doing, you know, there's, there's lots of stuff going on, uh, is rimfire because then I don't have to reload and uh, it also is a little bit cheaper. So I'm really uh, working on the rimfire side of things for 2019 and I'll get back into the centerfire stuff 2020. Uh, there's my is my shooting plan uh, for that. Uh, as for goals, projects, I mean, there's always stuff being worked on. PRS is pretty fo pretty big focus for me at the moment. But the other thing uh, is through Impact Dynamics, which we referenced before. We uh, oh, I'm putting a number of videos out. Some of them useful. Some of them definitely not useful. Uh, my favourite video from the US was the five minute documentary on the best beards of shot show for example so yeah we, <laughs> we if you follow our channel at all uh, we like to have fun it's not always shooting related but it would be shooting adjacent maybe uh, but you know it's uh, you may learn something you, you probably won't uh, but hopefully you smile wasting your time i, I don't know but that going. The beard, the best beards of Shot Show. It seems interesting. I definitely want to check it out. I can tell yeah, you. Yeah, I'm going to find that video since we don't show. And we can yeah. get that. Where is that on YouTube? Good. We can pull That's you up. Or yeah, 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 just best beards of Shot Show should come up or the Impact Dynamics channel. But there were some really good beards of shot. I got to tell you that there is uh, some. There was some impressive stuff walking around. Anyway, <laughs> I think day day three we went. We better we better film some of this stuff because this is some of this stuff's legendary. <laughs> yeah. That's the, that's the important stuff you do a shot. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, no, but you know what? It's uh, it's different. You know, it's fun. it's, it's different and, and it's fun on top of that because, like, I, you yeah. know, you always got to try to think kind of outside the box with shot because everybody goes. Usually, the media people mm -hmm. will go there and all tend to do the same shit in a sense. Well, yeah. if if Glock is releasing this or if somebody's releasing this, they tend to hit those boosts because there there was some hype. There's some product hype there, so immediately you'll get. You know, three, four, five, ten channels mm. in your subs subscription box where they're all talking the about the video. new, the new release of such and such. Now, some are more entertaining to watch than others because of the person hosting the channel or whatever. Sure. Um, but yeah, you know, if you try to do something outside the box, like something funny, something different, uh, that usually can get you new, new followers or or some, yeah. you know, something different. Cool. You know, it just makes sense more entertaining like uh, if, you, if you get a chance the one we did with krg we covered their full product line which was great except someone else pretended they were me for half the uh, half the video which uh 
I'm not sure it ended well for them, but that's a, that's all right. That's another story. So yeah, we always try and make our videos a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun. Uh, usually we uh, we probably fail miserably, but we have a good time doing it, which is the important part. Yeah, that is that is the important part. Yeah, we got to try to think of something. I don't know. I think we're, we'll 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 drag Greg Cannon to the next shot show. Hopefully, I'll no, make it move. because you know you know how I am with the with the shot show deal but if we're all three there we got to try something a little bit outside the box something different we got to come up with some sort of a game or a competition between the three of us yeah oh, well, I, put me in i'm in for, i'm in for a game at shot who all can, right we're in for uh, four we're in for who four. can get who can get kicked off the most booths Is that, <laughs> oh, i could probably pull that one off just oh you be you have some tough competition i reckon they're great right, it's all being rowdy it is all. <laughs> i was about to say you have not hung with rusty <laughs> what uh geez what do you got to do to get kicked out of a booth at shot geez, i don't know <laughs> i'll tell you later <laughs> yeah and i wonder how many times before security the sand security gets hip to it and then you just kick that oh. entire damn show mm. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's where you gotta be able to run yeah uh gotta be able to run <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can't do. yeah i don't know if i get caught it's like hi i'm anthony no <laughs> uh, yeah i was gonna pass myself off as jen yeah i think you can pull it off there's yeah, plenty of exits You'll bring a wig. It... <laughs> yeah there's plenty of exits and entrances so you can kind of like get out yeah. and get back in on the other side and security probably won't know shit depending <laughs> on how good their their communication is and cam their cameras are which supposedly uh, cameras, is yeah. is like the most of yeah. sub, you know yeah, las well, vegas casinos you, you can't you can't get away with shit or can you mm. Um, as far as uh, yeah, really. yeah, uh, yeah, we, we might can have go. to have a different plan, Greg. We might yeah, have to we'll, have a different challenge. Well, we can get <laughs> yeah. Rusty, if you're gonna go as me, you gotta wear yoga pants. Oh, <laughs> Lord. you can't see you can't see from the waist down. Currently, I might be practicing already. You might yeah. be. I want to yeah. see it at shot next year, though. <laughs> those uh, <laughs> those American Rifle series uh, yoga pants are kind of the. The, what the cool yeah. people are doing? I got these awesome yoga pants. You can wear these. See, they have the whole fundamentals <laughs> or a crouch for the talent. The chair, man. Yes. Yeah. What is she standing on that she gets up there that quickly? It must be pretty sturdy. I tell you that because she climbed up there really quickly. What? Yeah, if I try Anthony, stand on this, you no, call me a monkey, and you say <laughs> my chair must be pretty sturdy. <laughs> no, I didn't know. It looked like Andy did it. It looked like. <laughs> It looked like you just propped up on the table real quick. I'm like, shit, if I if I can't do that right here in my setup, I'll fall and bust my ass. I, I stood up in my chair. Here. Oh, geez. You have good balance. Oh, my God. There you go. Well, you were the ballerina type, so. You just said my chair better be sturdy. And better be sturdy. I thought, you, I thought you stand on the table. I didn't know you did the chair. That takes a lot of guts without busting your butt. Stand up that quick. <laughs> I'm impressed, so, Jen. I'm impressed. Yeah, impressive. Uh, what else we got here? We talked. Uh, how do you guys train over there? Dry fire, live fire. Are, are there long ranges available for practice? So I think you hit on what the distances are, but what do you got for yeah, practice? I think for practice, like a lot of guys train on private property and private property in, in most states, you can shoot as far as you, as far as you're able to, as far as your property is. So, uh, some guys will, will, you know, practice out to 2k and, and, and more, uh, just about to actually release a video of a guy who's working his way out to two miles. So the, you know, that sort of stuff on private property happens a fair bit, but in terms of training, guys definitely do live fire, definitely do dry fire, probably more dry fire, I'd guess, because of the limit of clubs. But the guys where I live now that we've got a club that's running regularly, they do a lot more live fire uh, stuff and actually run comps and, and, you know, that sort of thing to train. Uh, as for me, uh, training is not necessarily top of the agenda at the moment and spend too much time putting on matches and uh, editing videos and podcasts. But that's, uh, as I said, 2020 is my, 2020 is my year. That's going to be, uh, that's going to be the way we go. Oh, any live stuff that came up? No live? Uh, okay. Well, Gina said she just messaged me that she's gotten home late and missed the first half of the show and she's going to go back and watch it because she loves Rusty. Ah, oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, and I, oh, actually, she put it on the YouTube thing too. Oh my God, I'm so upset that I just got home from late work and I'm just going to join in. Hey, Rusty. There we go. Jeez, um, and late. then Hi. Tim wants to know how many long range rifle builders are there in Australia? That's a good question. Ooh. Just just finding my Arizona challenge coin that Regina gave me. 
Anyway, a little nice. shout out. Thank you. Uh, What's John many... on the other side? It's <laughs> a great photo. Uh, <laughs> how many long range, long range rifle builders are there in this country? Uh, I, I couldn't give you a number, but there's enough to have a choice. Um, there's, I'd be guessing ten or twelve that we probably see represent PRS. So that's yeah, good. That's, that's about cool. like here. Okay. I mean, there's we have a lot of. We have big ones, but then there's a lot of smaller ones too. I think I feel like there's a lot of rifle builders here. You can kind of there's a yeah. lot, yeah, 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 definitely. So, you, know, you got yeah. the big ones like GA and whatnot, and then then you have mm-hmm. like Bubba's guns. <laughs> yeah, and you have Spartan Precision, who built that beauty. Mark built that beauty, and it's that. wonderful. And is a tack driver. It's a better shooter than me for sure. Damn, that's a really good shooter. So down there, how do you guys deal with like the crazy snakes and spiders and just like everything trying to kill you when you're on the range? Like I feel like everything alive in Australia is trying to kill you. It's all deadly. Wait, speaking of snakes and rifles and Tim, didn't he like almost get eaten trying to get that rifle for you when he went to Arizona? Yes, he was like going to zero it and a rattlesnake came up and decided that was his rifle instead. (laughs) And in the video, he's someone is there with him and they're videoing it. And this rattlesnake is all curled up and his tail is rattling. And the other guy that's with Tim goes, dude, you're not getting your rifle back. (laughs) Yeah. But I mean, y'all have a lot of that over in Australia. Like, is it really, is it a problem on ranges for real? I, I'm not sure I want to say to you, I don't want to ruin our reputation of being a deadly place to visit. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I haven't, on, on official ranges, I'm yet to see a snake. I know that they've that, definitely been there, and I haven't spent a huge amount of time on, on lots of ranges, but on uh, several times we've been hunting and there's been snakes around or there's been, uh, you know, I remember one time we were at a, a property and we were just zeroing at 100 and and about five meters in front of us, a, a brown snake just went straight across our path and, uh, you know, just went, oh, let him go. Seems He seems preoccupied and uh, off he went and uh, we, we didn't see see him again, which is a good way to be. Um, they, you know, they're, they're prevalent and, and, you know, same with, I'm sure you guys have all areas in, in the U.S. have animals that want to kill you, uh, several uh, of them. And, you you know, the guys who are around those areas just just deal with them. You know, I've, I've been bitten by a redback spider and you just, you know, there's things you do to alleviate that. Um, but I mean, my official formal answer is everything is going to kill you. So just don't, don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's absolutely, you know, people, you always, I always see these people with uh, posts and things about alligators, right. Or, or some kind of crocodiles. And I'm like, dude, we're like, we like, that's, I live like the Everglades is right here. Like that's mm. it's a very common thing to see them. They're all over the place. Um, I get it's like something you just shrug off. Like it's not a big deal. Like unless you're swimming side by side with them. I mean, it's you know. But if you're on a boat or if you're on land, they're usually you know you see them and then you just move away. You know, <laughs> you know you don't yeah. want to slap them on the nose or nothing and record a YouTube video doing it live. You know that's kind of. Um, well, I mean, you, you know, probably get a few, a few. Uh, you, you, you might get, you might get channel. some hits. Yeah, you know. <laughs> we could, you know, we could well, be a while before you get more subscribers with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It might be a while you, before you upload another video, though. And people are willing, <laughs> people are willing to do some shit like that for some yeah. views. You'd be surprised. Um, yeah, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, in the you know, and I, I, I'm not afraid. Of, I'm not one of those guys that are afraid of snakes. I kind of grew up with them. Was in the reptile industry, so those things kind of don't. Don't kind of rattle me none, you know? I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Mm-mm. I've seen snake bites and what they do. Nope, not a fan. No. I mean, if there's a rattlesnake right next to my rifle, I'm not going to go be, and volunteer to go in the hole to grab it and pull it out. I'm not one of those type of people, but. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm going to shoot it with my pistol. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm not one of those people like it's not bothering you. Leave it alone. Don't kill it. I'm, I know people are like, oh, my God, you kill it right away. That's what the shotguns are made for, <laughs> you know. But like in Tim's scenario, he couldn't get on his rifle because there was a freaking snake that was very deadly or poisonous yeah. right next to him. So that makes sense to do what you got to do to kind of get your rifle back. Because that thing's, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not leaving, you know, eight grand <laughs> in optic sitting Next to a snake, no. it's not going to happen. I'm going to get that back. 
<laughs> one way or the so, other, you're going to get it back. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The crocs up north are, uh, uh, I think, they're a bit more savage than the alligators. They are, they're pretty, can be pretty vicious, and we certainly lose a few, uh, few locals and quite a few uh, tourists to them. But uh, Butters, who who uh, you met, Jen, uh, he he deals with them on a more regular basis, uh, and he's uh, he's a radiologist, so he's taking some X-rays of some interesting things inside crocodiles. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> so I can imagine. Anyway, I'll, I'll leave that leave that to your imagination, but uh, it's a mm. uh, it's certainly yeah it's something that I think everyone deals with. But you know we've we've certainly got quite a few of them. But in terms of uh, they've never stopped a PRS match because of it. We've never stopped a club shoot because of it. Um, so go on we, down, go on yeah, down, come, come on down. You, you're you're oh, welcome to have a crack. Yeah. So it's a non-problem. Well, then I need to come yeah. to Australia and shoot. Except the drop bears, but we'll we'll. Worry about them later when you get here. The what? The drop, the drop bears. bears. Yeah, Google that one. The I'll, drop I'll yeah. bears. I was like, holy shit, what kind of bear is this here? It's a drop bear. And there we go. So, yeah. Um, geez, I don't know about those crocs, but they do sound a little bit more aggressive. But I tell you. Vicious. <laughs> yeah. Hey, oh, a drop bear. A hoax in contemporary Australian folklore. Okay, I was about to say, that thing looks evil. <laughs> drop bears are pretty evil. Yeah. He's seen a few, apparently. Yeah. 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 So. yeah, but yeah, the gators are not as aggressive. But don't take my word for it. Do your research. <laughs> Watch the Discovery Channel. I mean, the, the things are right under. They're right underneath the boat. Like we're fishing. Mm-hmm. We're like in, in, I don't know, eight feet of water, maybe bass fishing, and we look, and right there's like a gator sleeping, or what we thought he was sleeping. He was just right there. We just sc- strolled right over him with the boat, and that's it. That's all she wrote as far as the, the, okay. the, the my experience with gators. But uh sure. Well, Sounds we just expensive. had uh what was it last year that the little kid was at Disney World like waiting in the little waiting in the pond and an alligator came up and grabbed her. Yeah. And wow. Killed that yeah. baby. Yeah, I was in a Disney kind of like a like the Orlando one Disney of the resorts. Yeah. one of the resorts. Yeah, so like I said, uh you don't so want to pet it. <laughs> you, you don't want to pet it on the nose, or you don't want to be a kid right there. You know, but yeah. hey, uh, yeah. yeah, that's a, a gator thing. Gator thing aside, but yeah, I've caught a few. They're fun mm-hmm. to catch. Not we okay. don't bring them all the way in and like hold them up and yeah, take a live stream <laughs> real quick oh, and hold a gator. But a fishing lure, oh, you'd, fishing you'd like lure. Yeah, yeah, we'll, jump on top yeah. of that. I was about to yeah. say, yeah. I want to see a picture of you like yeah, we we've on caught, top of one wrestling. They, yeah, they eventually popped the line, obviously, but they're a little bit they're they're fun if you want something <laughs> heavy so, on the end of the ride. So hey, we were talking about doing a, a like a Patreon thing. You, we were talking about that the other day. So if we do a Patreon, will you jump on top of a gator? And our Patreon people could, could get that picture or the video of possibly your death. I will. I will do this. I tell you what. If you guys want to, I I I know some folks that know some gators. Okay. It, this would not. This was. This is not. This is easy actually for me to do. So we're gonna. We're thinking about starting a Patreon thing. I've been against against it for kind of a long time, but it seems that it's. It's working out for a lot of folks. Maybe we'll try it. We'll think about it. We haven't even. I've just kind of brought it up. Um, it's kind of like I don't know. You you. It's kind of like a subscriber kind of thing. You pay a certain amount and you unlock certain content. Yeah. Um, you can do like giveaways for only your Patreon, you know, supporters. You can release content to only your Patreons. You know, it's a lot of different. You get like me jumping on a gator and wrestling it. You know, where are you gonna find that? If unless on you're on Patreon, exactly. Yeah. So there we go. So, I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos of people wrestling gators, but you never seen me do it, and that might be worth a coin. I so, we, we run a Patreon for our podcast, and uh, yeah, we don't we don't particularly have any uh, major sponsors or anything for our podcast, but it uh, it certainly helps a little bit in, in getting equipment. In fact, um, I'm expecting uh, some new equipment to arrive today, and I thought it was going to arrive during the show, which would be really awkward. Uh, but anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see, knowing my luck, but it, it certainly helps with uh, with equipment. And you guys were were um, were saying how flash this microphone is, and it is a pretty good one. And, and that's because of our Patreon supporters. So it certainly uh, helps helps the show become a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, look at his setup. I mean, we, I know we have Frank. Galley on here. I've been doing this for six years. You you should see what I got going on in here. I mean, it is it, like I'm looking at his chair. I'm like, I need to invest in one of those. 
Take your well, chest. Yeah, that's comfortable. How many <laughs> listeners do you have, Rusty? Oh, about three or four. Um, <laughs> you <we> just... don't. <laughs> we talked about this at shot. <laughs> yeah, no, we uh, we get somewhere around the f- when we're active, when we're putting up podcasts on on a on a fortnightly basis, we sit around fifteen thousand a month, which I know in in podcast world is not a huge uh, huge number, but we you know we're real happy with that. And I mean, we'd do it if we get if we were getting three or four, we'd still do it because we really enjoy it. Um, we're actually just about to kick off a new team. Uh, in fact, tonight's episode is going to be the first recorded with some of the guys from the new team. So, uh, a bit of a change, uh, but you know, I think for the for the better in the long run. Um, certainly, we we've we've been running just over three years, and the guys who we kicked off with, uh, their interest has diversified into other things. So they've moved on to other other projects, and we've got a few new guys who are coming on board who will be known to our audience but that episode will probably go out next week sometime because we're not very good at this whole live thing we're much better at recording it and then like removing all the abuse out of it and then releasing it um, <laughs> you should so, do both <laughs> we, do you know what we, want? we actually do it live for our patreon supporters hey you never know what's gonna abuse. happen live we've had some interesting <laughs> things happen we have had to yes, take have. shows down and edit pieces out before haven't we yeah Yes. I believe that completely because, you know, you, you might accidentally stand up and show yoga pants and no one wants to see that. You'd have to take that out of the thing. <laughs> or she yeah. might fall when she was trying to show them. <laughs> no, you definitely leave that in. You'd that would be a horrible for the Patreons. Gee, thanks, Rusty. You're supposed to be on my <laughs> side. <laughs> yeah, you leave that in. Uh, but, what? yeah, we have had our blunders. But, like, a, a lot of people who uh, – have had success either they had a very successful podcast and then they do the live thing and it kind of kicks off or they do it yep. the opposite way and they do both and mm. it kind of just you know because some people will i don't know just every you know it's like people like for a long time and jen you ran into this they were like everybody's like well is it a podcast or is the shooter's mindset show a podcast or can you guys release it as a podcast format uh, we've done it a long time ago, many a couple of years ago, maybe I've I've done it, and I would just kind of rip the audio from the live show, so we wouldn't run it yep. side by side. We would run the live show when it was over. I'd rip the audio, kind of run it through a software to clean up the audio a little bit, mm-hmm. and then edit some intros and outros, and then into the audio, and then upload it to a kind of back end podcasting website. And yep. we've done that for a while, and then. I don't know what it was and I you know you see all the stats and the views and everything would climb and then I kind of I think the website or the package that I had purchased ran out of memory and obviously these these webs these yeah. uh, these shows can we've had shows run two hours we've had shows run two and a half hours we've had shows run mm-hmm. 50 minutes so you can generally chalk up about an hour hour and a half per show so the memory will fill up really quickly. And then for some reason, I just, I don't know if I saw the benefit at the time. So I just kind of scratched it and yep. we've done a show with Chris Costa many years ago that is, can still be found a shooter's mindset featuring Chris Costa, man, that was probably a, a long time ago, but it's on there and probably one of the most popular shooter's mindset shows on a podcast format. There is one because Chris Costa's on it and two, it's the only one available on that you can search and find still but there's yeah. a lot of back end stuff there's a lot it's a there's a little bit of extra work behind it people are running yeah. websites and they're putting time stamps like you can find us talking about this at this mm-hmm. time mark you can find us talking about you know what i mean so if you really factor it in there is quite a bit of work behind doing both yeah absolutely it's uh, certainly the hey- the heyday of podcasting at the moment though there is a uh, it is uh, getting huge numbers uh with, yeah, uh, with but, all sorts of people yeah, but the podcasting definitely brings more listeners or viewers, if you would say, than mm. most of the other platforms that I've seen numbers for. So, A lot of people yeah. won't sit down anymore and watch. And so they're like, oh, I'll listen in the car or right. while they're doing something else, put yeah. headphones in and listen. So I'm going to say my, my biggest time for podcasting, like driving to and from work, it's a 15, 20 minute drive, depending on how late I am. Um Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's not much. There's not much time there. Generally, not much time there. But like when I when I go home to visit my parents, when, when you know, whenever I'm in the car by myself for a long trip, 
the before I go, it's like, all right, let's download. All right, there's four hours worth of podcast material. Let's go and run. Um, yeah. I, I also listen to podcasts a lot, just like working around the house, because you know anything with visual, even if it's you know, you don't need to see us right now to be watching this, but if there's something on a screen, I'm going to watch it. But I could turn on a podcast and you know work on this, fix that, mm-hmm. just working around the house, stuff like that. Yeah, my uh, my commute to work is about twenty seconds from the bedroom to the office, uh, but I do about <laughs> 20, 20 gun shows a year, which are generally about a you know eight hour drive as a minimum one way. So I I go through these spurts of podcasts and listen to a whole stack of stuff, and yeah, it's uh, they're, they're certainly a good medium. But anyway, I, I like I like that. We do a few other podcasts, but not necessarily shooting related. There we go. Anything here live, and then we can clean this one up, and then we can kind of wrap this one up. What do we got? I, I show myself on nothing on my end i don't have anything live but i have one more question you said you're you're getting into a lot of uh rimfire what's your yeah. what's your preferred rimfire setup uh let's not go with preferred but what i'm using at the moment is a cz uh, 452 <laughs> and uh, with a falcon m18 on it and it does the job uh it's one of few matches in that in that setup and uh, so far, I mean, I'd love to go down the voodoo line. That'd be wonderful one day. Yes. But it's just, it's just, it's money. And mm-hmm. at the moment, uh, yeah, we're, we're spending money on, on videos and building PRS and other bits and pieces. And so uh, at the moment, I use what I've got, uh, which is something I believe in. Is, you know, if you're going to rock up to a match, just take what you've got. And you know, eventually, you work out what you, what you want eventually. But um, if you've got something that's half reasonable and do the job then then go with it and and it seems to perform i certainly think it can it can shoot very well when it certainly when it misses it's not the gun it's uh it's me so uh, i haven't yet outgrown the gun uh although i'd you know love something smoother and nicer and fancier but yeah we don't need to get there yet i was spending too much money on microphones that's why yeah my my big problem is I, i shot the voodoo Mm, yeah, don't ever do that. I, mm. I, I, I can't. I can't not afford that. Um, right now, my only rimfire is a is a savage, and yep. like I said, I'm pretty new to this precision stuff. But I could outshoot that gun easily. I can outshoot that gun. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the 455, the CZ 455 or 457, just because mm-hmm. Voodoo is not in the cards at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, they're very nice, but they're very expensive, and mm-hmm. certainly I'd like to get one one day, but I, I'd like to get my Center Fire uh, stuff together. I'm building a new Center Fire by uh, sometime this year, so that that's more of a priority than the Rim Fire at the moment in awesome. terms of equipment. There we go. Uh, lastly, here a comment here from Luke. He says, Australian stuff wants to kill you. American stuff wants to to kill and eat you. So I don't know how how true that is, but it seems like the, all the Australian stuff wants to kill and eat you too. Like you got the drop bears and you got yep you know sharks you got the crocodiles they got the water too yeah yeah you know he's got the water stuff you got I know I we always we're going off track with the animal stuff a little bit yeah but (laughs) yeah you know you got all the you know I don't know it's like the biggest snake in the world is from Australia the biggest bear in the world from Australia they all want to kill you and eat you it's like every time you turn on some type of Discovery Channel there all these animals are from Australia. So who knows? There's maybe mm-hmm. maybe you run across a lion when you're shooting a match. Who knows? <laughs> just uh, I just saw a, an article the other day where uh, they were talking about someone in 1974 who shot three lions in Adelaide, where I live. So uh, take that as what you will. But anyway, uh, so Dude, we shot would... lions locally. See, the the cool thing is that you're around a bunch of buddies with a bunch of guns. So if you do see a lion, <laughs> it's um, it's almost like a majestic experience. He's just walking across. Just leave him alone. But if he wants to eat you, at least you have a couple buddies that'll at least try to drag, or at least we hope, try to fight the lion with you. Yeah, very quickly a new stage brief. Uh, the hour yeah. gives you a brand new yeah. stage brief on yeah. the fly, and away you go. Or, or you go. I will not. I will not wrestle any lions on the Patreon. Uh, but Don't I can get yourself, Anthony. I can get maybe a baby tiger in there. I know the folks. We can wrestle baby tiger. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, might cost me a pretty coin, but whatever. It's for the Patreon supporters, right? That's right. That's there right. We go. Looking after. Uh, good move. There we go. Uh, other than that, I think we're good to wrap this one up. Unless yep. you guys have anything on your end, what do you have, Greg? Anything? No. No. Nope. Good. All right. 
Uh, wind this one down to shout outs, Jen. Start us off. What do you got? Shout out to McMillan Stocks. My A10 is like almost done, I think. Um, <clears throat> so I can't wait to get that. I'm super excited that you all will know when I get it because there will be pictures all over Facebook and Instagram <laughs> when I get it. So you'll know. Don't worry. Uh, Night Force Optics, awesome scopes. So check them out for that. Warren, scope mounts and bipods. I have an awesome bipod that I enjoyed at the last match. Uh, Under Industries for your jersey needs, shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta. Um, and I got a shout out Trigger Tech because I love my diamond. It's amazing. And that was uh, my first match shooting the diamond was this past weekend and it was amazing. So love them, check them out, go get a diamond. It's amazing. And shout out to GSL suppressors. If mine will ever get out of jail. Um, mm -hmm. We have another picture at this match where the people next to me laying prone are like this <laughs> while I'm shooting. So yeah, I need that suppressor. I'm trying to think like, is your rifle louder than everybody else's? I'm like, why is this? I don't know. Everybody swears that that break is really, really loud, but it's really a good break. So it's not Keep loud it when you're behind it. It's when you're next, to, next it. to it. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got, Greg? <laughs> All right. So I have PDC custom and I'm not waiting on my awesome lime green chassis. It's here on this rifle. <laughs> uh, shooters and sharpshooters of Augusta, um, Overwatch defense and NDZ performance. Boom, there we go. Rusty, shout-outs. What do you got, man? Uh, a couple of people. Uh, Nikki, who said that the uh, this uh, whole episode was meant to be all about her. Um, but anyway, Nikki, thanks for that. Uh, one thing I do want to say, we um, we have some amazing artwork at the PRS matches in, in Australia. So um, I don't know if you see that. That's one of the outside covers of the match books. Um, pretty common stuff to see. So I want a big thanks to uh, Trent, who does all our artwork for all the PRS matches. And it's... Uh, yeah, he, he ups this uh, matchbook stuff to uh, another level. It's really impressive. So uh, to those guys, uh, Greg, who's the other co-director, of course, and uh, and we'll, uh, because she mentioned it, uh, Regina, uh, Regina and Tim, who looked after us so well in Arizona. Thanks heaps for having us. You oh, were in the U.S. for how long? Like like 28 days or something, weren't you? Yeah, something like that. It was about four weeks. It was, yeah. uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. And now, look, I mean, if we start getting into people to thank for that trip, uh, we will be here all day. They'll add another hour to the episode. We don't need to do that. But thanks for all <laughs> you guys after us while we're over there because there's plenty of you. There we go. Uh, what do we have on my end? If you're watching on the YouTube side of things, make sure to hit the yellow button right below the video. That'll subscribe you to the channel. Every Tuesday at 9 Eastern, we're doing a new episode of The Shooter's Mindset featuring another great guest. Uh, the folks over at Tactical Shit appreciate their support all this time uh, for many years now, actually. Uh, folks over at Tandem Cross, so if you're into rimfire pistol game or rifle game and you need some parts, take a look at tandemcross.com. They have all those parts that can get your gun either raced out or kind of just replace some parts to get it working again. Uh, like I said, my email, theshootersmindset at gmail.com if you want to get a hold of me for any reason. Uh, definitely thanks to Rusty for spending some time waking up early. I don't know how early you wake up, but 10 in the morning, having some rum. We appreciate you taking the time there. <laughs> we're we're uh, done with the rum. But, yeah, uh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, folks over at uh, Gear Nation USA, we have some of their shirts on the Shooter's Mindset shop. They have some new ones that I need to actually upload and get up, um, but you can check that out on their Facebook page, Gear Nation USA. And lastly, the folks over at Rise Armament for their fantastic AR-15 triggers. If you're in the market, take a look at Rise Armament. And that'll do it for episode, what are we on, 258 of the Shooter's Mindset. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We'll see you on the next one. Cheers, guys. See ya.